Hey everyone, today I just want to do a basic overview of a home emergency standby generator. With everything that's gone on in the country over the last year or so, there's been a lot of interest in these. So I just thought I'd do a basic overview of it, uh, talk about my experiences, what I learned, and uh, how this whole system actually works and how it is set up. Now, there's a lot of options for home emergency power. The most common and uh, cheapest is to have a portable generator that you set up that's on wheels. Whether you do a manual transfer switch or just run extension cords into the house, uh, that is a much cheaper way to go but the problem with those is there's a lot of downsides you got to set them up you have, someone has to be home you constantly have to refuel them they may or may not have enough power to run the whole house depending on how big the house is so there's a lot of downsides to those things and if you get extended storms sometimes getting gas for those if they're not converted to uh, natural gas or propane uh, gasoline can be an issue i'm in uh, new jersey we went through hurricane sandy and you had a lot of people without uh power for one to two weeks and they couldn't even get gasoline for the generators at that point so those uh, portable generators basically became useless once all the gas stations lost power for extended periods of time so uh, my opinion if you have the budget for it this is a much much better way to go uh, the only two main downsides to an emergency standby generator is this is the least DIYable thing for you to do for uh, home standby power uh, if you are not a professional, this is not something you should be tackling yourself. A lot has to be done. You should be pulling permits for this. It needs to be inspected. Uh, you're going to have to run gas lines. There's a lot of electrical work you do need to do. So if you do not have a lot of experience doing this kind of stuff, don't even try to tackle this. There's a lot of liability if you try to do this yourself or do this without permits and, and you do something wrong. There's, there's a lot of things that can go catastrophically wrong if you do this wrong. Uh, and the other main downside is going to be the cost. These are significantly more expensive than a portable generator is going to be. So if you're looking to do something like this, depending on the size of your house, mentally prepare yourself to spend ten to fifteen thousand uh, dollars for the entire setup like this from start to finish. So those are really the only two main downsides, but there's a lot of pluses. You don't have to be home for this thing. It is 100% automated. If power goes out, it comes on by itself, and when power comes back on, it shuts itself off. And if you size it correctly, it will run your whole house, depending on the size of your house, the amount of high-demand electrical appliances you have. There are lots of calculators online, both from facilities that sell these and as well as the manufacturer websites, uh, where you can calculate the load on your individual house to know how much you're going to need and how big of a generator you're going to use. And these residential ones will cover the overwhelming overwhelming majority of houses, unless you have a very, very large house with a lot of high demand electrical appliances, this will work. Um, if you do need to go above the capabilities, which is usually up to about 20 kW for the residential units, the commercial ones you can use at your house, but they are significantly more expensive. You're going from air cooled to liquid cooled, and they're much heavier duty units, and the price is going to easily double to go to a, uh, a commercial or a small business standby generator. So uh, this is the largest one that Kohler specifically offers. This is their 20 kW model. Uh, this one has the aluminum housing, which I'll get into uh, in a minute. Uh, if you want to set one of these up, the, the, main, the first thing you're going to have to cover is how you're going to put it on the ground. couple different options there. There are pre-made bases, or you can pour... I think either one is fine. There's debates. There's plus or minuses for both. You can pour a concrete pad, sink anchors into it, and bolt it that way. You can also buy these uh, pre-made bases, which I got this pre-made uh, concrete-style base. I basically just put crushed stone underneath it, tamped it down like you would if you're putting in pavers. Put this pre-made slab on top, and then the generator bolts to it. The angers are already built into it, so it's already ready to go as far as that. And it's, it's a fairly easy install that only takes a few minutes. And then as far as the actual generator uh, itself, with the generators themselves, there's two big considerations for the materials made out of you have composite which is basically like a plastic and you have metal which is typically for residential units going to be aluminum this is aluminum i think aluminum is beneficial in the fact that it does have it has much better or much closer minimum distance requirements the composite ones typically have much much further minimum safe distance requirements from how far it would be from your house typically it's about five feet every manufacturer is a little bit different you can go to the specific generator and look in the installation guide to see what your minimum safe distances are for the generator or how far it has to be away from things like trees and houses and uh, windows and things like that. But the aluminum ones are much closer. They're usually 18 inches, give or take. It depends on the manufacturer specifications and your state requirements. So that's something that you need to look into, but I would recommend aluminum so you can kind of tuck it much closer to the house so it doesn't have to stick off 
uh, into the lawn. Now, as getting into the power ratings for these things, this is another place you need to be really careful and kind of do your homework with. They will often rate them by a system that's called KW, which is kilowatts or wattage. So this is, like I said, 20 KW, which is 20,000 watts of power. But most of these generators are dual fuel. They can run off of natural gas or propane. Propane contains more energy, so you will get a higher rating off of propane. This is rated at 20,000 watts, which is on propane, on natural gas, which is what I have this run on, it's 18,000. So that's just another thing you need to keep in mind when you're sizing these things, which fuel you're going to run. So before I open it up, we'll just take another look on the size. You have, on this side is the uh, the air intake, and here you can see you have the electrical plumbed, both, uh, I have a Cat5 wire, because this is basically also based off of Wi-Fi as well, so I can talk to this generator through my phone. Kohler can also see it. If I have a problem, they can diagnose it uh, through their system. So there's a Cat5, which I'll show when we go into the basement. I'll show where the transfer switch is. You have the power coming in, and then the painted brown on the top. That is the natural gas line going into the generator. The other side is just the exhaust. And this actually comes apart very, very easily. You can actually take three sides off of this with no tool. So I'll go ahead and open this thing up. So let me just pop the front off so we can get a little bit of a better view. Take the sides off as well. So on the one side here, you see the regulator for the natural gas. It also is started by a car battery. That's what powers it. This side is just the exhaust. The exhaust does not uh, vent directly out of it. It actually comes vents into the box itself that helps keep the sound down as you can see very simply comes apart and now the whole thing is exposed so there's the uh, basic car battery that starts it you have a controller up here this generator is essentially a one liter two cylinder natural gas engine this is very common used on small equipment uh, they use these v-twin air-cooled engines on things like zero turn mower so it's a very very uh, common setup it's really nothing too exotic and then you just have the engine is directly bolted to the actual generator itself so as you can see it's very easy to get to maintenance is easy they put hoses built in here so it has a nice little valve so doing oil changes is super super simple the oil filters on top air filters on top the dipstick it just opens up um, it's really easy to get to for maintenance purposes and this is something you want to open these up periodically check make sure animals aren't making nests in here nothing built up because this thing is always ready to go and you never know when it's going to fire and start up when uh, when power is lost now these do require have automatic transfer switches as opposed to generators portable generators that have manual switches some people will mount them onto the side of the house next to their meter uh, i had the room in the basement i put it in the basement so it's out of the elements it's nice and uh, protected from the weather, so I don't have to worry about something happening to it uh, or water getting into it. So we'll go in the basement, and I'll, I'll just kind of cover the setup I have down there. All right, so down in the basement, I have the emergency automatic transfer switch on the right, service panel on the left. Prior to having the generator installed, I just had service come through the top of the panel like most homes would. What made this so involved is we had to pull the meter outside, and we had to reroute the electric coming into the house into the automatic transfer switch. It then goes into the side of the service panel and powers everything. So utility power on the left, emergency generator power on the right, and this switch uh, automatically, completely on its own, will cycle between each one depending on if it has utility power or not. If power is lost, it fires up the generator all on its own. Once the generator gets settled and is up to operating speed, usually 20 to 30 seconds, the switch will switch over from utility to emergency backup and then power the service panel itself. It also makes sure, because it can only power one thing at a time, will not backfeed power back out into the, uh, the utility line. So what's nice about going with a larger system like this, I didn't have to pick and choose circuits. I didn't have to sacrifice anything. I can comfortably run the whole house and I actually upsize the generator one level from what the house really needed. So should I experience a time where I'm without power for a very long period of time, the generator's running for a week or possibly even more. It's not overstressing the generator because it's well within operating parameters to run the whole house and not at maximum capacity. So uh, behind this cover, there's really only just a manual switch to manually cut utility power to it, which would fire the generator. Uh, that blue cable is that Cat5 cable that comes inside from the generator. I have it plugged in directly to a Wi-Fi extender. The Wi-Fi extender is on an uninterrupted power supply or battery backup that a lot of people have for computers as well as the main uh, 
router and modem upstairs so when power goes out which it has gone out a couple of times when i'm home on my computer i never lose anything i don't lose any internet connections or anything like that the battery power on the on the uh, laptop takes over and then once the generator is operational everything comes right back on and i don't lose anything and the nice thing about having that on that on the uh battery backup is i never lose the push notification so if i'm not home and power goes out i never lose notifications from the generator itself and i can communicate with it all the time so that's basically the, how this system is set up and how most of them will be set up with automatic transfer switches so this is by no means a cheap project or option to go with but it really has the potential to pay for itself it's my main one of my biggest concerns was the possibility of a basement flooding especially uh, in the middle of a storm my basement is not finished right now but if the basement were to flood in the height of a major storm and we're without power for a couple of days i don't have to worry about it flooding and losing the furnace and water heater basically anything you have in the basement and if you have a finished basement you have the potential to lose tens of thousands of dollars having that all repaired so this system can potentially pay for itself and just the convenience of having everything powered during extended uh, power losses you can st i can still run everything in the house when i need to and the generator is very quiet i really don't even hear it when it fires up inside the house unless i'm standing by the window that's closest to it it's relatively quiet for such a large unit and I, i'm very happy that i ended up putting this in it was like i said a big cost but well worth it in the long run so i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching